I made my first visit to Brussels some three years ago. I was about to graduate from university and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with my life. But somehow I felt maybe Brussels could be interesting, European affairs, wear suits, go to dinner parties. And uh, during my stay in Brussels, I read a book that inspired me very much, A Long Walk to Freedom by Nelson Mandela. I loved his stories about his difficult youth, um, the uh, peaceful struggle, but also the difficult decision to take up arms, and of course, his years in prison, role in the transition process. So I felt so inspired, I wanted to be a f freedom fighter myself. But what cause to fight for? I come from the Netherlands, a country with few problems, and you know, maybe my personality is not really that of an activist. So if I was a freedom fighter, I was one without a cause. Anyway, uh, I moved to Brussels. Um, I found a job in consultancy. I improved my French. I ate loads of waffles and fries. And um, I got to know the city of Brel and, uh, and the Berlimont. So, and, well, I'm from the Netherlands, a country where even politicians go to work by bike. So I did the same thing. But I started to notice that Brussels maybe it's not really made for cycling. I had the feeling that uh, I had to, to defend myself. I had to explain people, why do you do this? Why do you cycle to work? And uh, um, <laughs> well, <laughs> in doing that, um, explaining to people why cycling to work and how do you deal with the, the hills and the rain and, and all those questions that people have, and isn't it dangerous? Um, slowly, I started to get better and better in answering those questions. And I started almost to feel like a representative of the cycling community. <laughs> I started to feel that I am taking a political stance just by using this thing. Um, I don't name it. You have people who give cars names. I don't. Um, <laughs> so now I can say I am a freedom fighter and cycling is my cause. And I fight for the rights of the cyclists on the streets. And I even, even go further. I believe that the bike is the solution for every problem. Get a bike, get a life. <laughs> so to start, Brussels, thank you. You should say it yourself and then you start believing it and you, you join the cause. So Brussels is a very congested city. Uh, every morning and every afternoon there are queues of, of cars. It's so silly. Most of those people are using the car for five kilometers or less, which is a distance that you can relatively easily do by bike. And apart from that, one of the fun parts of a bike is that you can pass all those cars standing in front of the, of the traffic lights. You have to have a bit of courage. Uh, I am quite an assertive driver, so I, I show myself on the street. Um, Another uh, more serious reason to prefer the bike. Um, all those cars are emitting enormous amounts of, uh, of, of carbon, of course. And we really have to do something against global warming. Of course, we have to find innovative solutions, but some of them are already there. Uh, another uh, problem we face is uh, obesity. Children aren't moving enough. And we, sh we should do more sports, and I won't lie, uh, I'm not really doing anything, but at least I go by bike to work so I can feel uh, my conscience is, uh, is all right. Um, but there is even, even something more for me. I feel that uh, cycling is another experience. I am outside, I experience the seasons, I see the colors changing, and it makes me quiet, I can think. Uh, for instance, every day I uh, pass Place uh, Flagey, and it's not the most beautiful place there is, but it's different every day. Sometimes it's sunny, sometimes it's wet. Today it was all white and foggy when I passed. I see children playing in the fountains. I see uh, people queuing for the best fries of Brussels, and that is an experience. So is cycling all bliss? Well, I'm doing my best to convince you, but it is true, Brussels does get a fair amount of rain. Um, but be honest, Brussels doesn't have a monsoon climate, and in the, da in the days of, uh, of smartphones, there is an app for that, so you can even look up when it's going to rain. 
Um, another, the hills. That's something people ask me all the time. How, how can you climb the hill? Well, it's like walking a hill, but then on a bike. It's, it's, and when it's difficult, <laughs> When it's difficult, you, you can always get off and you walk a little and or you can say it's, it's, you, it's doing your sports. I tried to, that excuse as well. And so finally, is, is cycling dangerous? Um, well, I personally don't really believe that. It's also something cultural um, coming from the Netherlands. For instance, um, you will disagree with me, but I don't wear a helmet. Uh, I don't think the bike is the problem. I think it's more the infrastructure in general. And um, so it is important to take some, some safety precautions sometimes. Um, but you also, I already start to notice that the VLO is changing things in that because drivers are more used in, in having uh, cyclists on, on the lane, as uh, in, in my view it, it, it should be. Uh, so, well, as a freedom fighter, I have to have uh, demands and I think I'm quite modest. Uh, what I want, what we would like to ask is an equal position for cyclists in the mind of the policymaker and society at large. So um, when you are making policy for transportation plans and so on, think about the bike, uh, think about the VLO, teach children how to cycle, that's very important. Because, I mean, cycling, isn't it just awesome? Thank you.